Now mountain biking for its best part is a tale of two halves, I like to think. You've got the uphill and the downhill. It gets a bit flat in between, a bit trail ridey, but do you know what? I'm fairly biased towards the downhill. I flip and love it. Jumps, drops, rocks, roots, gnarly terrain, the bikes, it's awesome. And going fast is even more awesome. But going next level quickness, pro speed, well, that is something that is pretty tricky. So today we're gonna look at some pro tips on how to get proper quick with Loris Ravelli of the Canyon Pirelli factory team. We're gonna catch up with him in a little bit first, but what kind of kit and equipment do you need to hit that uber pace? Well, let's find out. So starting at your head then, when it comes to a helmet, an open face like this will do the job. You can see it comes down a lot at the back. It's still fairly well vented to keep you nice and cool. And a lot of them have nips and other sort of rotational protection devices built in. But if you're serious, a full face is where it's at. There are lightweight versions and full on downhill versions being more lighter weight and more vented. Uh, the bigger ones, definitely a bit more heavy duty if you're really putting the laps in. If you want to protect the eyeballs, glasses and goggles are an absolute must if you're not too fast. Also, stop teary eyes, stop you getting emotional on the way down. For safety, you might want to think about wearing body armor, so certainly a chest protector maybe, but definitely a back protector if that is your thing. It can help with confidence. There are certain versions of this as well. Check the CE certificate on these though to make sure that they are up to scratch. Elbow pads are another one. Nobody wants skinned elbows. Look, what's that all about, eh? I could have avoided that if I had elbow pads on. And gloves, of course, as well. Now, call me a hypocrite, because I don't wear gloves very often. I know you're all gonna tell me off for that, but gloves will stop you shredding your hands. Maybe uh, look at different ones with sort of varying levels of protection on the back and on the palms as well. When it comes to jerseys, there are downhill jerseys like this GMBN available in the shop. One that we've got here, long sleeve, again, to help protect you. And they're made of tough material to stop ripping and shredding as well. And the same with pants, downhill trousers as well. You know, these ones are fairly fitted, these Danese ones, they've got little pockets in those still. And again, they're sort of an abrasion resistant material. You can get padded undershorts, so to stop your, your thighs and your hips getting beaten up, those are always really useful. And then on to knee pads. Again, like all protection, knee pads come in varying stages of paddedness. I'm not sure that's a word. But you can go from a real soft shell knee pad like a sleeve all the way up to a big burly padded hard shell knee pad as well which will absorb the biggest craziest crashes you can throw at them and then it's down to your footwear don't be fooled by the disco slipper i wear them now and again obviously but a downhill specific style shoe will be much more padded it'll be much tougher material so if you bang your foot against rocks or stub your toes you're not going to destroy your foot or your shoe so, I mean, that is a quick run through. And then when it comes to bike, well, I don't like to tell you what bike to ride. You can ride on any kind of bike, but the more travel, the bigger the brakes, that kind of thing. Oh, the weather's coming, the more you're gonna enjoy it. Right, that's enough of me talking. Let's go find Loris in the woods to get onto the skills part. Okay, look who we've got here, Loris Ravelli. Loris, thank you for joining me, mate, on the trail today. Now, first up, we're gonna talk about line choice, aren't we? Because, you know, you're flat out, and I wanna know what kind of lines you would take on a section. So we've come to a very wide open bit here with multiple line choices on it. Which line would be your racing line and why? Um, pretty sure the high line. So up on riders, up, up on, on riders. riders left here. Yeah, up, up on the left, so you can come in faster here. Okay. Have a little brake check, and then let it go on the bank. So it just opens that corner. And up. then open the corner, so you can have way more exit speed. Yeah. And so it's just it's a quicker line all the way through, like a big arc all yeah. the way through. So it's only one turn instead to do like oh, three of, turns. Oh, okay, that oh. makes good sense. So instead of like coming and slowing where you are, yeah, coming down low, 
and then turning right here, you would just go ah, all the way around yeah. the outside. Do you yeah, fancy showing way. us? Yeah. Come on, let's see it, dude. Let's go for let's it. Let's go. Okay, Loris is going to drop in. I'm expecting it's going to be pretty flat out. I tell you what, I'll go the lower line to show you the comparison as well. Okay, Loris, you definitely showed that this was a much faster pro line on the rider's left side there. You were flying through there and really did carry a lot more speed. Is there anything else that makes you think about your line choice or is it sort of just the fastest way? Um, I think also the braking point is really, it's way better than, than the turns because you brake just a little bit there to set up okay. to be on the east bank. And then a little brake check here with a wheel straight so you can carry way more speed. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay, let's yeah, let's dive into braking points a bit more then. So do you you don't brake at all on this middle section here? You yeah, brake before it up the top? Yeah, before the top a little bit to be perfectly set up on this one. Okay. So and, and then roll this one. Yeah, and then really straight on pretty much here. Yeah. And then a little brake check to have the right speed and the oh. right positioning and then hit the, the turn. Just as hard as you can. Yeah. As hard as it'll hold you. Yeah. Okay. And then, I mean, again, so we could see obviously from me doing this side that because you have to come in so much tighter here that I have to brake a lot more coming into it. Whereas Loris, like he was saying, he does a lot of his braking before and carries his speed across the top. So again, not only is it a faster line, it's faster in the sense that you brake less. Yeah, also. Yeah. I mean, if you're a racer, that's definitely a good thing. Yeah. You don't want to be braking too much. All right, well, let's have, a, let's have a little dive further down the track and maybe look at some other sections we can try out on. Okay, perfect. Nice. All right, Loris, we've got a different type of turn now because we've got a really flat out section coming in. And there's like, you would, the racing line is definitely to stay high. If you want to avoid the rocks, you would come left or riders right. But we're into this really tight hairpin here then. So where would you do your braking? Because I just came blasting down and just pulled a massive skiddy drift. How, did, how would you go about it? I think um, the perfect spot is, is there on the rocks. So just you're coming, just coming down the rock, like this section sort yeah. of here. Okay. And you can have a like a breaking point from here to maybe to here. Yeah. And then let the brake go to have a maximum grip on the on the turn because the, it's not really steep. Yeah. And it's pretty. Like, oh, gravelly. Yeah. Like, far, yeah. Oh, I see. So uh, rather than having like, if you are hard on the brakes in the turn is when you might lose traction is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. When you change the speed of the wheels, uh, okay. you always yep. lose grip or... Okay. Well, look, let's see you blast through it and see how it's done. Right now, pre-hopping is essentially bunny hopping over something to go faster, I would say. Would you agree? Yeah. It is. So, and the, a jumps uh, and rocks and obstacles are great examples of this. So we've got a jump here, which normally you would blast it down the trail and just send it off the jump, right? Yeah. But the fastest thing to do, which Loris is going to show us, is to pre-hop it. So to sort of run us through, Loris, what you're going to do sort of from here onwards, because I'm just going to go send it one. Yeah. That's like a pretty fast section. So if you just hit the, the takeoff, you're yep. gonna go miles. Yeah. And you wanna hit that uh, on the little, back side? Yeah. So like so you wanna you're aiming to actually I mean, because I'm gonna take off here and I'm gonna land down here somewhere. Yeah, which is pretty flat. Yeah. But I wanna backside this one. So yeah, can I have a pump and increase my speed? Oh, so you're not looking to just not lose speed from jumping in the air, you're actually looking to go faster. Yeah, I try to, to be faster. Yeah. And I guess if you do this maybe once, two, three times on a track or a race run, yeah. you know, all those little bits of time will add up. Yeah, thanks so much. Okay, good top tip there. Let's see how it looks in real life though. Right, I've brought us to the next section because we're going to talk all things unweighting. Now, when you see a proper flat out rider go through a rough section, 
you kind of wonder how they make it look so smooth and how they're not destroying their bikes. And what they're doing is unweighting the bike. And Loris is going to tell us about that now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to use that pressure here. This bit in the middle? Yeah. The bike going to compress and then when you release, when we are at the top of the rock, okay. the suspension going to release the pressure. So like it's longest point? Yeah. And we're going to extend the body and we try to be light on those rocks. And, and just float through? Yeah. Float. So tell me, Loris, rather than just hammering through, why would you try and unweight the bike on something like this to get through it? Like smoother, it's okay. faster. Yeah. So like it's also safer and less uh, punctures. Um, okay. So and also jump. you can you can save more energy because oh, you don't okay. need all the holes and. Oh, like, so you're not just constantly like, <sighs> yeah. like that all the time. You can have more energy near the bottom. So that sounds good to me. Okay, let's drop him. All right, then, so lastly, when it does come to racing of any kind, but especially downhill, I like to think, getting in the right mindset and sort of being able to absorb the pressure of race day is pretty tricky. It's a tough place to get yourself into, to not, to not buckle. So let's hear, Loris, how do you get into sort of the mindset to, to focus for that one run and, and go as fast as you can? I'm um, like, I start from the like, first day of practice to try to enjoy the, like, try to enjoy the track and, okay. Like have fun, right? So you you more when you have fun, you are way more chill than yeah. when you be like, oh, I'm I'm struggling. So yeah. try to be really relaxed, and then before the race run, uh, I use a bit of music and I like a joke with my mechanic. We do okay. some exercise together and so, just enjoying. Yeah. So, so do you, do you have like a, a set routine that you always do, or is it change from race to race? No, it's pretty much the same. I go like at the top one hour before yeah. the, the or rally or the, the final and then yeah. 40 minutes before I start to warm up. Okay. And then and I you... take like 10 minutes to visualize the track. Yeah, and... is that with the music you were saying? Yeah. Okay. And I uh, try to, 10 minutes before the race run, I, I turn off the music and I start to visualize the, um, the track and yeah. how I how I want to ride it. Okay. Like, uh, like what I push, yeah. what I try to be more smooth, or yeah. and then just go in just the gate and it. go for it. No. Okay. So I mean, there's a few things then that you do. So you sort of trying to enjoy it and not get too stressed right from the right from arriving at the event in a way, yeah, exactly. which I think is actually a great tip because I think a lot of people take racing very very seriously, and it should be fun. I think as well. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, like a sort of a route on, on qualifying or a timed run day, you have like your routine of heading up at a set, like you head up before, you do your warm up, bit of vis visualization, get in the gate, and then it's go for it. Yeah. Dude, that, that's that's what I do. And, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's, that's some great tips. Look, Loris, thank you very much for joining me on this video, mate. It's been really insightful and some great information you've managed to share with us. So, uh, yeah, all the best for next season, dude. Thank you. Thank you so and, much. And uh, look, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want some more pro tips, let me know what you'd like to hear, and maybe we can do them in the future. But we're out of here. We're going to go ride some more down, aren't we? <laughs> See you later, everyone.